Hey everyone, Joshua Hanlon here and I'm with Chris and we're at the Bricks and Minifigs store here in Kenosha, Wisconsin and he's got some really rare, super cool Lego sets that we'll be taking a look at today. We're going to start with this fun city construction set that has some nice play features. So uh, what era is this from and what can you tell us about this set here? Yeah, this is from the, the 80s and it's from the Legoland city. So when all the boxes were tagged with Legoland diagonal mm -hmm. in the corner, which is really fun. Um, it's kind of a specific amount of city, so it's different from like the modern day city that, that we see. Uh, it's got the garage doors like we're used to seeing. It's got, uh, you know, the dump trucks, but it also has some nice features of this crane that's able to move along and it can rise and you can, you know, lower it and raise it. And it's actually spring loaded, so you can actually use it to grab bricks and, and dump them out. It's it's a lot of fun from a play perspective, and these gray pieces, they simply don't make this anymore. They don't, they, this mm -hmm. track isn't available. So it's, uh, it's unique, it's fun. Um, we love seeing the, the 80s style things come in. And we have a few collectors who specifically look for the Legoland branded ones, and uh, uh, they come in and you know, often, often snatch them up because you know, they don't come around very often. I think what you see with this type of a set in this era for sure is very much kind of giving just like the base to run wild with your imagination. When you look at this, there aren't a lot of pieces here. You've got almost just the outlines of some structures and things. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the idea is that they would come and it's a construction site and it's up to the child who mm -hmm. had the set to continue on, like to build the rest of the building here or to add on to it. Like it's, it's meant to be the catalyst of play not the entire play itself. And these really cool printed base plates as well, which are always neat to see those different designs and kind of the way you can mix and match some of those. Yeah. And it's amazing how many different variations there are because there's some that are very close and as you like start looking through the history of them, you're like, well, this one's slightly different than this one and you realize there's just so many variations. Next down the line, we stay somewhat in the city type idea with a train model, a very special train model here. So this is the Santa Fe Super Chief. What year is this from? Uh, I actually forget the year. It's gonna be in the. It's gonna be in the early 2000s. Okay, so early like, 2000s. Yeah. Now um, a lot of people might be looking at this, and being like, "Why are there so many train cars laid out here?" So what is the story behind that? What do each of these represent? Yeah. So the the first model that came out was, of course, the the engine itself, uh, the Super Chief, which is kind of an iconic uh, train engine with that livery from uh, down in the Southwest. Okay. And uh, from there, there were additional models made, but it was actually just two different sets. There was uh, one set that you could create two different cars from. You had to choose which one and you buy two sets to make both. And then another set that you could make three different cars from. So you get a whole arrangement of different types of cars that would be pulled by the Super Chief. So it's very historically accurate, but it was missing a few things. And so there are two custom cars in this set, one of them being the, uh, the B unit here. So B units uh, were specifically about adding extra strength to the, to the engine without needing the whole cab and, and that kind of thing. So it was just really just another engine that was put on, but no cab or anything for, yeah. for an engineer to drive. And then you have a custom observation car. This is a very popular car to build, uh, to go along with this, because the observation car was something that was pulled by, by the, uh, the Super Chief, um, but just there was never an official set for it. So we're fortunate enough to have one copy of every one of the five official models, plus the engine, and then the two well-known custom cars that go with it. And what sorts of play features are there here? Can you kind of take the roofs off and look inside? How does that work? You can. So the, the roofs come off. You can put minifigs on the inside so you can, you know, stack it up with, with people. And, you know, uh, it was designed in the old 9-volt train days. And so there's an actual uh, instructions to put a 9-volt motor on it, run that around. I've seen people modify it into power functions. Um, uh, I haven't looked for Powered Up as, as the new model, uh, but uh, you know, a lot of different uh, power options over the years uh, with it. But the, the Super Chief, specifically in the red and yellow livery, was the one that was the, the people train. That was the one that would, you, know, you would carry like, you know, the cars that would move people around versus mm -hmm. there were other liveries under that, under that similar shape that were um, used for you know, cargo and things like that. Gotcha. So, so the red and yellow specifically was around you know, moving people uh, across the United States. And I know you've got some interesting pieces here, like uh, the textured pieces and then even some of the windows, I think, on some of these. Yeah, so, so the, the pieces on here that you see, it's a pearl gray, or what they refer to as profile brick. I'm uh, not sure how many other sets those actually came in. They were they're actually pretty you know pretty rare from that perspective. You get a lot of them in each of these. <laughs> yes, and you do get a lot of them. Um, you know, it's a sad little story. Uh, years ago, when this set was just ending, I was visiting Legoland uh, as a family, and on their pick a brick wall, they had those bricks, and I bought like a tiny little bag of them. 
<laughs> when I should have bought a very large bag of Just dice. enough to remind you that you should have gotten a lot more. <laughs> Correct. That's exactly how many I have. So, uh, but they're, uh, you know, the doors are unique. They don't make these train doors anymore in this color. The windows are specifically unique. So these porthole windows um, they only come on the engine. So it was actually, you know, quite expensive to build the B unit because in order to do it properly, you'd have to, you'd have to buy three more engines because the red train base only came in the engine and then you needed the porthole windows. So uh, those windows you know, on the aftermarket started going for a lot of money because people would be, you know, wanting them to be able to build the B unit. Now, just as a, as a LEGO fan yourself, where would you kind of rate this in sort of the pantheon of LEGO trains over the years? I know that's always a big debate with the different sets they've released. Would you consider this to be kind of one of the better train models they made, or where, where does this stand I, I in your do. I, I consider this near the top of, okay. of their train models. Um, you know, yeah. The Metroliner is up there for a lot of people. They love that one. Um, uh, the, the BNSF, the, the dark green one, is, is also very popular, but because this one has all the cars that go with it and mm -hmm. all the different types of cars, from a complete set perspective, I really feel like this is kind of like at the top. For me personally, this is, this is at the top, so. Fantastic. We'll move on to our next lineup then, which is actually three different plane models here and some really cool, kind of unusual ones that you don't see that often. So if you want to maybe just start at this end and tell us what you've got here. Sure, so this first one is set 3451. This is a Sop with Camel. This was released in uh, 2001. Uh, and you know it's a great example of a biplane. Again, you know, aviation lovers, um, as well as military history buffs are gonna kind of love these sets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this was, uh, you know, this was a World War One, you know, plane. This is like the very early ages of, of you know, military uh, aviation. With and the, you know, the actual kind of machine guns on there, you see that with like both of these here, so. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's not something you normally see right. in Lego, but it's something that is accurate to the planes itself. Obviously very unusual to have unused sticker sheets from a, uh, a plane of this era. And this would have been an, an RAF, right, plane. That would have mm -hmm. been the, uh, the, what the, what the stickers, you know, indicate. Um, What's interesting about the Sop with Camel specifically is the the generally accepted story of shooting down the ace of aces of all time, the Red Baron, which we see in the next model here, um, was uh, Captain Roy Brown from the RAF, who would have been flying a Sop with Camel uh, when shooting down. Now, there's some controversy now about whether it was actually Roy Brown that, that shot him down, or if it was you know anti-aircraft guns on the, mm -hmm. on the ground that, that did so. Uh, History will figure that out, and there's only so much we can do. But the, the general story was that he was shot down eventually by a stop with Camel. Again, the Red Baron, this is from 2002, and amazingly, a, a, you know, a perfect unused sticker sheet, not something we see very often right. uh, you know, from this era. And you know, we move you know, in release order by Lego, so you've got the stop with Camel 2001, the Red Baron in 2002. We move to the Wright Flyer um, you know, in, in 2003, yeah, obviously the first uh, what's regarded as the first you know airplane the first flight mm -hmm. now history again tells us that there's some controversy there may have been an earlier flight you know over in Europe and and that sort of thing so again history has to figure out how all that's going to play out but the right flyer you know amazingly accurate you know <laughs> even some of the flaws of Lego allow it to look <laughs> sort of what like it would with the, the wings kind of bowed down a little bit um, uh, a rather complicated build, actually, uh, for its era, just because of the way that you have to build the wings and then snap them together. It, it's a, uh, it's very interesting. Great display model, though. This is one that I think looks phenomenal. It's very, very large. It's mm -hmm. much larger than you know the Sop with Camel or the Red Baron, um, and it does actually spin. So like, like the whole. I was mm -hmm. wondering about that. So there is some actual play features and kind of functionality. To yeah, it. which is which is really cool. Um, you know, getting everything lined up is a little bit of a challenge. You know, kind of all the instructions from this era provided you know their own unique challenges as far as you know being able to see things. There's, there's actually a spot in the instructions where they tell you to put a piece on, but they don't show you like which studs it connects to because it's blocked by like another part of the build. So you're like, I'm gonna guess and hope that it goes in the right spot. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it was it was fun to we had to kind of rebuild part of it from you know a used buy that we got in. So, um, that was fun to do. Frustrating at a couple points, but uh, you know, a, a, overall, just a great model. And you know, I love these three planes together just because they show such a uh, you know a great perspective of early aviation history. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and going from you know we can barely fly and we're off the ground for a few seconds to 
you know, the use of them is, you know, military vehicles mm -hmm. and war and who was gaining the advantage and, and uh, you know, the, the challenges that have come from there. So, uh, again, not the kind of sets I, I think we'll see made, you know, in, in today's day and age, uh, but phenomenal to have. Um, I, these are two of my personal favorite sets that have in the store. I think they display well. Uh, I love the history behind them. Uh, it, they're, uh, they're just phenomenal yeah. looking sets. I think they're very visually striking as well, whether it's the all red of here, the, the Red Baron here, like you said, just kind of the size uh, of the, the right flyer over here. I think just great, great visual models too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They, they are, they're just fun. Like, <laughs> like when you think about Lego and think about being fun, these are models that I think of just being, they're just fun. They're fun to look at, they're fun to hold, they're, they're mm -hmm. you know, they're mostly swooshable. Got to be a little gentle with the right flyer. <laughs> um, so they're just, they're just fun. And that's what Lego's all about. And then to finish out our lineup today, we go to Castle. And of course, we've got some of the very early days here with some of the original sets. So what are these two sets here? So yeah, so of course, uh, you know, we'll go with the, the very first Castle, you know, set 375. Um, this is the US version of it. So 6075, the Yellow Castle, uh, you know, it's marked as 1980. It was originally sold 1981 in the US, 1978 over in Europe. So this is, you know, back when releases weren't global, right? Mm -hmm. they, they they had separate time frames. Um, early early days of Castle, right? This is the first Castle set. The all of the chest plates are stickered. All of the shields are stickered. Nothing is printed on this one. Uh, it makes it a little bit of a challenge to you know, have all the right pieces. Um, the knights with these uh, with these face shields that fall off, which is great. <laughs> Um, but you know, your minifigs here are in great shape, which I noticed that looking at these earlier, uh, because like you said, with the stickers and things, it tends to tends to get very damaged over time. Yeah, and that was that was part of the challenge. We were missing a couple pieces for it uh, when we got it in used, and so I had to, to search uh, search around and find those few missing pieces. Finding them in good shape is difficult. Um, they are out there, but uh, it, you know, fewer and farther between as, as time goes on. Um, you know, I, I the old castle is just iconic, mm -hmm. right? It, it is. It's kind of the holy grail for a lot of Castle uh, fans. This is this is what they want, the very first one. Um, we're excited to have it with the box. Box, not in the best shape, but it's also, you know, 40-some years old, so uh, a few extra pieces that mm -hmm. we had along with it. Um, it's, I, I think it's fun. You know, you don't see the box, you know, as often anymore as you used to. Instructions are in pretty good shape. Um, it's, it's just one of those sets that you'd like to like to you know say that it's been through the store right, right. This one we've had exactly as, as being the owner one of the things i like is being able to say like i've owned a yellow castle yes we're going to sell it and then <laughs> i won't own it anymore but as the owner of the store i can say i've owned a yellow castle right that's that's fun as, as a fan myself absolutely and, and then uh we have a, a jousting tournament uh again this is 1980 so early early castle theme and really before there were specific you know like like you know uh like the the knights, uh, lion knights, or the dragon knights, or falcon knights, that kind of thing. So, this was a step up, though. Much of this was printed. So, you have the printing on, you know, the the king and the uh, queen or the princess in uh, in here. We have printing on all of the knights, printing on the shields, the same uh, helmets uh, with the the face shield that we saw in the yellow castle, uh, and uh, you know, again, not one that's seen very often. Uh, in some ways, this one's even more rare than the Yellow Castle. Uh, the Yellow Castle was so iconic and, and sold for so long that there's a few more of those out there. This one's actually a little bit harder to find than, than the Yellow Castle. Mm -hmm. But both great examples of some of these early castle sets that LEGO did before they started in with a lot of the official kind of castle themes that came in the, the 80s and then into the 90s as well, which I think is still kind of the, the golden era for a lot of those medieval right. themes. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, <laughs> the, the 80s castle themes and then, um, uh, yeah, the ones with the trolls uh, mm -hmm. that came afterwards, I kind of, I kind of like that as like the final castle theme mm -hmm. that was a true castle theme. And then we ended up with, of course, the license themes and Lord of the Rings and that sort of thing that kind of took over. But uh, uh, the, it's fun to see the early progression of, of castle in coming to the store and just being able to, to have them here for a while. And, you know, hopefully they'll go to a great home and uh, people will enjoy having them. For sure. So this is a, a great example of some of the older, rarer, and just kind of more unique things that you carry in the store. But as people might have noticed behind us in the video, you have so much more than that in the store here. So no matter what you're looking for, no matter what theme it might be, uh, it's probably represented in some way here in the store. <laughs> yes, absolutely.
And so if people want to learn more kind of online and follow what you guys do, what's the best places to do that if they want to check you out online? So our Facebook and Instagram are, are the best places. Just look up Bricks and Minifigs Kenosha. You'll find us on, uh, you know, on both of those platforms. We try to post daily. Um, you know, it'll either be new, new inventory that we got in or, you know, uh, fun tidbits that we've learned from the store, that kind of thing. So uh, that's the best place. Or just stop by. Like, we never know what's going to be on the wall on any given day. Stuff changes every day. So if you're looking for something specific, swing by and, and uh, you know, see what we have. Do you make a point to try to post if you do get some of these more unusual type items in there where you let people know about that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, yeah. If there's something specific that comes in that we know is unique and that people want, we will, we will post that and uh, make sure people know it's available. That's great. Well, we'll have links in the description to uh, the website and social media where people can check all that out. So make sure you check them out online, but definitely, like you said, come into the store because that's the best experience you can have. Check out all of the amazing uh, Lego offerings that they have here. And you can mention you saw them on Beyond the Brick and meet some of the great employees here as well. Thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate right. it. Thanks for coming, guys. Good to see you.